it's no exaggeration to say that things are a bit weird right now. It feels like a race to see who can lose money the slowest. Cash? Ooh, inflation gotcha. Stocks? Ooh, that's crashing even faster. Crypto? Who knows, but I wouldn't go putting my life savings into a coin with a dog's face on it right now. At this point, it feels like the best investment might be put it all on red and hope for the best. Not financial advice. Today though, I want to do a basic check in on America's economy because hey, you guys doing okay over there? You're acting really weird and seem a bit down lately. At its core, markets right now are doing exactly what markets are supposed to do. Buyers, sellers, let's meet and agree on some prices. Now there are currently a lot of people in the business of selling some assets, but not very many people looking to buy those assets. Now this leads to the million dollar question, why aren't people lining up to buy stocks like they used to? Now watching the news, the answer is probably coming off as incredibly, incredibly obvious. Well, people aren't buying stocks right now because all the lines are red and pointing firmly towards the ground. Now herd mentality is definitely not something to discount when we're talking about markets. But if the beginning and the end of this story is investors playing to follow the leader, then well, this wouldn't be a very interesting topic to research or make an entire episode about. In fact, if this was the entire case, I could probably end this video right here. Instead, I want to figure out whether this line of ants is a line of ants running from a fire or not. It's no secret that the economy is an incredibly temperamental machine. Some parts are working exceptionally well right now, while other parts, they're just smoking and having sparks shooting everywhere. For example, if you were a glass half full type of person, you could say, hey, stock market is not a perfect measure of the real economy. Unemployment is low and consumer spending is still holding up, but more than a month of punishing losses can damage a country's financial psyche. See, <laughs> this is all in your head. Jobs are up, spending dropped bit, but companies are still selling things, ignore the flames on the other side of the machine and let's just keep calm and carry on. Now to the other side of the coin, glass completely empty because I drank it to cope with the losses. Enter inflation, the check engine light of the current economy. Now you might hear inflation and think it's just about the dollar value, but the investor concern here really revolves around a lot more than that. You see, inflation is a bit like an economic cancer. Let it go unchecked and it's going to go rampant. But try to address it and the chemotherapy is going to wreck you before you eventually recover. For a while there, Jerome Powell has been sort of like the dad in a road trip comedy. Alright, so the destination is low unemployment, high spending, and low inflation. Here's how we're going to get here. Okay, so there's some post-COVID supply chain problems driving up prices. Makes sense. Give people a lot of money and take away the items they can buy. Perfect recipe for high prices. Don't worry though, that inflation is just transitory. Alright, Russia just invaded Ukraine driving up gas prices. Not great. Now transportation of items is more expensive, driving up prices even more. Don't worry though, that's temporary. <gasps> All right, prices should be going down right now, and uh, nope, everything is still expensive. In fact, oh wow, prices are actually still going up. Prices, if you don't stop freaking out this instant, I'm going to turn this economy around. Now, Jerome Powell raising interest rates 75 basis points was the economic equivalent of eh, banging a Yui. Forget this growth path. We're going to start fighting inflation by heading in the exact opposite direction. See what you made me do, prices? So now that we're actually in an inflation fight, the mindset has changed. This 180 degree swerve and the hype that was leading up to it has been a huge trigger for the recent stock market sell off. Now as soon as the inflation reports were starting to come in showing that numbers were in fact continuing to go up and not looking too transitory, the investor pearl clutching really began. 
So why would a Federal Reserve rate hike cause everyone to start dumping their shares in companies? Now, unfortunately, in fighting inflation, the Federal Reserve has really had to take aim at the two parts of the economy that are still cranking along pretty well right now, employment and spending. You see, you want to fight inflation, you're either going to have to take money from people or get people to voluntarily not spend the money they have. Now, because Congress can't even agree on doing popular things, I wouldn't be holding my breath on something controversial like raising taxes, also known as taking money out of the economy. You instead sort of got to get people to voluntarily lock up their money on their own, rather than going out having some fun and spending it, boshing up prices. Now, to explain this approach, just imagine if the government were to print out, say, a trillion dollars in cash and then stick it in a vault without telling anyone. Money supply would increase dramatically, but the sheer fact that the money existed wouldn't boost inflation on its own. So, how do you get a bunch of people to put their own individually newly minted money into a safe instead of going out and spending galore? Now you'd think 10% inflation would solve that problem by itself, but what do you know? People are still willing to go out and spend that extra money on the same goods, so those prices aren't going anywhere. Now that is, of course, unless you think that corporate America or somebody is willing to sacrifice some of those sweet, sweet profits to get back to some sort of fair value for the consumer. Now what the Federal Reserve is doing, on the other hand, is incentivizing saving over spending. Hey guys, stop spending your money bidding up and maintaining these high prices of items and instead sit back, pop open a beer and put your money into bonds or a savings account. Their interest rates are about to go up a lot. Now this is great for people sitting on cash, but not so great for companies, also known as entities created for the sole purpose of selling things. Start chipping away at that demand a little bit and yeah, stocks are going to start to feel it. Put simply, rising interest rates means that people who have cash earn more lending it than spending it, providing an incentive to stop buying products and instead maybe take your money and put it into a longer term loan. Now, unfortunately, if someone is earning more interest lending money, well, it also means that someone else is paying more in interest to borrow that same money. With rates going up across the board, there's a bit of a double-edged sword with each edge cutting the economy, because people just tend to start lending with a bit more discretion. Let's just say you can make a solid 2% interest rate lending to the United States government, well, you're probably not going to want to earn a similar interest rate lending to a company that's sort of limping along in the background. Turns out that during the pandemic, a bunch of companies have really been on life support, staying afloat based on cheap loans because the interest rates were so low. If you can't cover costs with sales, <laughs> borrow some money, rates are low. We'll be back on Easy Street again as soon as we come up with a solution to our core business model. Sounds simple enough. Well, now the tide is starting to flow back out a little bit and investors are starting to see a few of the cracks that were previously below the surface. Now, with suspected cuts to a lot of consumer demand and harder access to new money, with it being a lot more expensive and cost prohibitive for riskier business models, you're really starting to see a lot of capital fly away from riskier assets and those riskier assets plummet hard in value. Now that doesn't just apply to riskier companies, unfortunately, but also to riskier debt-laden nations like Egypt. Their debt has to compete with the fact that you can now earn a decently good yield lending to the United States of America themselves. Spoiler alert for a future Sri Lanka episode, because yikes! Now at the end of the day with all this stuff, the Federal Reserve now prioritizing fighting inflation over to economic growth and maintenance. What all this means is that they're slowing consumer demand, which drives down corporate profits and corporate values, while at the same time encouraging people to be saving and encouraging a bit more discretion when choosing who to make a loan out to. Thank you and that's, well, it's almost all I have to say about that because before I go, ding 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 ding, I have a quick 200 level bond analysis for all you bond nerds out there. 
Now, this might sound like a great time to be putting your money into bonds and bond-backed ETFs, but there's just this weird little metric to keep in mind when rates are continuing to rise. You see, when you buy a bond, you're basically paying a certain amount of money for a guaranteed future amount of money down the line. Think something like, all right, I'll give you 10 bucks now for 11 bucks in 10 years. Everything in that transaction locked in. And while it looks great when interest rates are going to keep rising, well, in fact, bond values go down in secondary markets when the rates continue to go up. That's because, great, you have a promise from the government for $11 in 10 years, but they just released a new tranche of bonds where they're offering $12 in 10 years for $10 now. All of a sudden, your 10-year bond that you bought about a week ago is looking a little worse than the new ones that were just released. Bond yields are the spread between what you're paying today and what you're guaranteed to receive in the future. That means that when you see bond yields continue to go up, any bonds you're holding on to today are going to continue to go down by a little in value each time a new bond gets released. Still, if you just want to hold on to it until expiration, it's going to be worth that same $11 or $12 that you were initially promised. But as the amounts keep going up for future promises, well, what you're holding on to today is going to be worth less. Keep that in mind before you dump all your money into treasury bond ETFs right now thinking it's the safest option, especially if you think that rates are going to continue to rise. Buying ETFs are currently actually losing value because the payouts on the future tranche of bonds are larger than the current tranches. Again, none of this is a financial advice, more like financial fun facts. Do what you want. It's your money. People made billions on Dogecoin. What do I know? But until next time, thank you and that's all I have to say about that. Hello YouTube, I'd like to thank my patrons for helping me put out my videos. If you want to support independent, nonpartisan news looking into the overlooked, join this growing list of exceptional individuals by clicking on that link in the description. Also remember to like, subscribe, and ring that bell so that freedom will continue to ring. Lastly, as always, thank you for watching.